Utah Conversations with Ted Kapner is made possible by the members of KUED in partnership with Jerry Taylor and Edna Anderson Taylor, proud to support local KUED programming. The Larry S. and Allison Smith Challenge Fund, encouraging individuals and businesses throughout Utah to support KUED community affairs programming. Taj Rowland's unthinkable personal story, kidnapped at age seven, sold to a Christian orphanage three hours from its village in India, adopted by an American couple and much later, remembered his childhood and his birth parents, and after a long search was finally reunited with them. This amazing story is detailed in a just-released book, The Orphan Keeper, a conversation with Taj and the book's author, Cameron Wright, next. This is really an amazing story and a captivating book. Thank you both for being here. Thank you for how, how did you come up with it? How did, you do, how did you find out about Taj's story, his life? And then Taj, how did you come up with this guy who can really write? <laughs> okay. I'll start. Um, so I, I was, uh, a friend of mine is a screenwriter and I, we were out together at a, at a basketball game and you put two writers together and the conversation will turn to story. And so, you know, it didn't take long before we're, we're telling each other about different stories. And he starts to tell me about Taj's story. He had worked with Taj uh, a dozen years before, looking at the possibility of perhaps doing a screenplay. Uh, things didn't work out, uh, but he kind of filed that story away. And so as he was telling me, I thought, you know what, I, I need to meet with Taj. My, my previous book, The Rent Collector, things were kind of winding down. I was looking for another story, and I just knew, hey, I, I, wanna, I would like to write this. So that's how, how it all worked out. And Taj, is it, how did you meet this guy? Well, the same, same in, individual brought Cameron over, introduced me, and just let me know about some of the things he's done before. And, uh, you know, I've had multiple people who approached me before and wanted to write a story yeah. or do a, a screenplay. I just didn't feel comfortable. And as I was speaking with Cameron and read his other book, I just realized this is the individual to write my story. You know, your story uh, begins really when you were, what, seven or eight years old, right? That's correct, yes. And <clears throat> you could tell it would take a long time, so I'll tell it for, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> I, I did read the whole book. I, thought, I found Fantastic. it very, very interesting. Uh, were you a good boy when you were seven years old? Um, uh, that uh, is, uh, yeah. uh, just to be honest, no, I don't <laughs> think I was. But again, was I, it, it, the, the definition of a good boy, uh, you know, when I was growing up in the streets of southern India, yeah. you know, I did what all the other boys did, yeah. uh, coming from poor families. Sure, I played yeah. around with uh, other children in the neighborhood, uh, so you know, swam in the rivers, played in the park, stole fruit, yeah. you know, all the things yeah. that other kids did. Sure, sure. Uh, what was the name of your village? You know, the, the, it was, the where I grew up was at a place called E-Road. E-Road, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay, so, okay, we're going to have to hurry through the story, and I'm going to correct you if you're wrong. Fantastic, thank because, you. Because uh, uh, you, you were kidnapped. You went to the, uh, with your dad to town. Is this true? Uh, the kidnapping okay, is Okay, tell quite, me about the kidnapping. You know, the kidnapping itself is... A little bit vague in my memory. Uh, yeah. Was I lured uh, by food? Was I, you know, grabbed and taken? You know, I was a seven-year-old boy, yeah, and yeah. psychologically, I I just shut that out, yeah. and I don't have really detailed memories of that. No. Um, yeah. And it's one of those I wish I could, but I just don't have. Yeah. And and you were taken in a bus, I guess, somehow. A that van. I do remember. I know that I was uh, picked up thrown into a van yeah. uh, or a large bus and a memory that actually brought this whole story together was I remembered I was driven about three hours away yeah, yeah, and then uh, yeah. placed into an orphanage. Yeah, yeah. And the orphanage was called the Lincoln Home for Homeless Children. That's correct. A and uh, you were there for how long? You know, again, that's another vague memory. I know it was a few months. 
uh, while I was there. Yeah, did they treat you well there? They treated me extremely well. There was <clears throat> enough food to eat, I was bathed, uh, I was taken care of. Yeah, uh, it, it, it was a Christian orphanage, Cameron? Yes. A Christian orphanage. I and believe. And they, they were buying student, uh, people, I said students, I meant children, including young babies. That were, was that what was really happening? You know, that's something that I can't speak to. Yeah. Uh, in my case, uh, I, you know, I did have some memories of that. Uh, I felt that I was uh, sold. Uh, but was it happening frequently? Did all the children yeah, in the, in the yeah, orphanage? Yeah, I yeah, have no idea. Yeah, yeah. I have no idea. I think they thought they were, you know, if they knew, and we presume that they probably did in Taj's case. We can't speak really for the other children, but... We have to assume, because he was treated well, that, again, they thought they were helping. They're probably looking at him as this poor Indian boy, and they're going to give him an opportunity to, to go to America. And so that could be what, you know, as an author, that's what I was presuming as I tried to flesh out that, that character. The orphanage owner has passed away, so yeah. he wasn't available to interview. But yeah. you have to think he thought he was doing good, and it kind of brings up an interesting moral dilemma in the story, really. Okay. Uh, we have some a lot of pictures that you sent us, and we're going to show some as we talk. <clears throat> this, of course, Taj, is you as a, as a young boy. That's your passport photo. That's correct. Yeah. And you were taken when you were seven. Uh, we don't know exactly how old I was. Yeah. Uh, the passport itself has the wrong birth date and wrong age. And so my parents, uh, when I arrived here, they looked at my size and, and figured they'd just make up a date and make up a birthday and an age. How old are you now? I am 45 years old. And you live partly in half the year half in India? The, half the time in India and half the time in the U.S. In Utah? That's correct. Yeah, and you both are neighbors almost, mm, aren't you? Yeah, 10 yeah. minutes away. Yeah. Uh, you have labeled this, Cameron, as a novel based on a true story. Right. So that will cause some others who read this, and you hope a lot do. Sure. Sure, Absolutely. of course. Uh, to wonder what in the story is true and what isn't. What is fact and what is fiction? Right, it's not always a black and white answer um, because uh, most of the things in the story did happen, but some things we just don't, uh, you know, we don't know exactly when, or as a storyteller, you want the freedom to be able to compress events, to, you know, put two characters together into one if you need to for the sake of moving the story along. Let me give you an example. So um, Taj's mother in India, in India they, they use, uh, uh, astrologers. They go to astrologers a lot. She actually went to an astrologer who told her that, yeah, yeah. Your, your son will come home and when he does he will fly. Well that happened about eight months before he came back. In the story, I had to make, put it in the beginning of the story because we leave India and come to the United States. Yeah. So that's just one example of kind of how you shift things around. Who are these ladies, Taj? Uh, those, that is my mother on the left yeah. and the other two are my aunts. Yeah, yeah. She was obviously uh, just devastated when you didn't come home for dinner that night, or the next night, or the next night, or the next, or the next year. And uh, she did call, use astrologers. Yep. And one of them, as you said, said that he will return. It's going to be a long time before he returns, yeah. and he will fly home. And that, that happened. That actually That's happened right. eight yeah. months before he came back in real life. In the story, I had to put it in the beginning because there was no other way to fit it in into the, the plot. Yeah, so. yeah. Is your mother still living? She is. Is she? How yes. old is she? My goodness, she's uh, it's got to be in the late 60s now. Uh, she, If you ask her how old she is, she wouldn't be able to tell you. She's uneducated. They didn't have uh, birth that, records back there, then. There's a picture of the two of you. No, that's actually my older brother. Oh, he's big. I, yeah, uh, when yeah. I saw that, I thought, well, Taj is going to be a big guy, but you're not that big. That's <laughs> no, no, older. that's my older brother. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And and uh, he still lives there. That's correct. Brother. Yes. Yes. He's uh, a, you know, politician now in the yeah, in that He's the mayor. Area. Yeah. Uh, similar to a mayor. So, yeah, similar city. to a mayor. Yeah. And this is your now your yeah, these right. are that's, both mothers. Tell, that's right. That's my mother that. and my father. Yeah. Uh, first time they met and that was in uh, June of 2015. It was uh, it was an amazing event to see that. Oh, to, absolutely. To finally see the two and here they are just like any mother. Uh, you know, kind of comparing, hey, here's how I raised your kid. My old mother, mother saying, hey, fantastic, good job. So Yeah. You're, tell me about your mother who adopted you. Uh, she's a wonderful woman. Yeah. 
Tell so. me about it. Uh, you know, my mother is a, a very strong individual who, uh, when I arrived... You call them both mother. I, of course. Well, of course. They are. They're both my mothers. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Of yeah. course. Of yeah. course. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And so my mother here, uh, just a strong individual, she recognized it, uh, immediately when I arrived uh, that she needed to spend some uh, special time with me to get me caught up. I didn't speak English. She took almost a year off to teach me English, kind of get me uh, aware of the cultures and what to expect. But my mother here is a wonderful person. She she has adopted five children, yeah, all yeah. from different parts of the yeah, world. Yeah. So yeah. it takes an amazing person to do that. Yeah, yeah. Did you have difficulty learning English? <laughs> <laughs> Ask me if I had difficulty learning English. I still English. have a difficult time with English. Do you? No, yeah. you don't. No, you don't. No, it took, uh, you know, of course, I was seven, eight. In reality, I came in December of 1979, and I turned nine years old in 1980. So in reality, I was almost eight, eight and a half when I arrived. Yeah, yeah. So someone who spoke, coming from a country that was hot, humid, um, and coming to uh, Utah where it was cold and snowy in a pair of shorts and flip-flops and trying to fit in uh, and not understanding anybody. Well, did the Rollins live in Utah? They did. Did they? They did. Uh -huh. Did they, are they still alive? They are, yeah. They're right. still alive. And, and when they still live here? Yes, they do. Good, good. Okay, so you interviewed the Rollins? I did, yes. How many people did you? You did a lot of research to put all this together. Well, I tried to. You know, I, I, you know, I was amazed <laughs> at how much you seemed to know about India, about the food, about their uh, yeah. spiritual lives, the gods they worship. You, you know. uh, did, did, did you know all that? No, no. Yeah, okay, did a lot ahead. of study and okay. research. Yeah, but, sure. But, yeah. Um, and Taj felt it very important that I, that I go back and, and see the places where he had been, where he had walked, and, and be able to eat the food and describe it. And so that was part of, of you know doing that, to write the book. But no, I interviewed Taj multiple times, um, the Rollins, um, really who else? Um, you know, anybody involved in the story that we could did, get, did get access to. Did you interview Taj's father-in-law? Um, you know, he's it, he's it, chosen to not uh, be involved. Be involved. In I, I, and, yeah, and so that part of it's true. Well, um, we in the book I say that we fictionalized his character because he has decided not to be involved and, and to speak about well, it. Well, so. okay, but uh, we yes, don't want to get too right. too deep into this. But his father-in-law was was friends with the orphanage owner. That yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And but That's he true. does he didn't want to talk he, about. No, he won't. No. You know, that's a, my father-in-law is a wonderful man. Um, and again, there's what are the connections, what weren't. Uh, you know, that's just something that we just didn't want to bring out in a book. Yeah, of course. Well, let's talk about your romance. You you, uh, you bring out several romantic <laughs> pieces. Taj in this. is just a romantic I, I guy. Th I, th I, th yeah. I thought that was amazing. Yeah. He met two or three really great girls. I did. Women. I did. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. y y was that part true? Uh, yes. You know what? They were absolutely yeah. true. The, the girl in London they, when you did the study uh, abroad? Okay. That part yeah. in London, you know, Cameron uh, felt he didn't want me to interact with too many characters. It's difficult for a reader to follow all those characters. And so he chose to take some of the uh, experiences I went through and come up with a individual. And, and that's where we came up with that character uh, who was well, a female. Well, I liked her a lot. She was great. I liked, <laughs> she, I liked her a lot, too. She was terrific. And then yeah. you had a friend uh, who owned a restaurant. That's correct. Uh, and there was a picture on the wall. This part isn't quite true, is it? It's, Go ahead. Tell well, me. Well, in reality, what happened is when I came back from London in the story, yeah. uh, I grew up, I went to high school, and then took off for London just to kind of rediscover myself and honestly to uh, serve uh, some time in the, for the church and you're a member of the LDS church uh, I am yeah I because am. the Rollins are members that's correct that's correct they adopted you yes go that's ahead correct. go ahead with your story and when I came back from London uh, I was missing the food I was missing uh, all those experiences that I experienced out in London coming back to Utah and there's a restaurant that opened up uh, Indian restaurant. I happened to go to that Indian restaurant and became friends with the owner. They invited me to their home and as I entered their home I saw a family picture. Yeah. And on the family picture I looked at the picture and I pointed to the girl and she was beautiful and I said 
That's my wife. Where's she at? <laughs> and that's do verbatim. That's absolutely true. Do we true. have a picture of them together? I think we do. Yeah, if you do, let's show it. Yeah, yes, there, there, there yeah, she, she is. is. There's there is, my beautiful she? wife. How yeah. long were you, have you been married? Uh, we've been married 20 years. And how many children? We have two children, Shamley and Tejal. Shamley and Tejal. Tejal. Okay. Yep. All right. I and so to, to go okay. ahead. I was going to say, I want to interject here too. Taj, indeed, uh, this Priya lived on the other side of the world. She was in Singapore. And uh, he indeed packaged up Air Supply's greatest hits and mailed to her. Air Supply, the music. Yep, yeah, that's correct. Hits. Hits. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. And I, I said, Taj, people are not going to believe you really did that, but indeed he did. You did yeah. really do oh, that. Oh, I did. Yeah. Uh, you know, when I saw that you, picture. You'd never met her, but. Oh, I never met her. Okay. I, okay. Absolutely. Okay. I, I was smitten. Yeah. I mean, look at okay. her. She's beautiful. Yeah, okay. And okay. so I, I found out her phone number, and she was in Singapore with her father and called her up. Or the father wouldn't let me speak to no, her, and no. pretty much hung up on me because arranged marriages. And yes, that and I think that was definitely a big part yeah. of it. That's a big culture in India. Yeah, absolutely. And so you know, I didn't give up. I, without even meeting this girl, talking to her, I went out and bought the greatest hits of Air Supply, and back then <laughs> that was the greatest thing for love songs. Yeah. Mailed it to her, and this woman didn't respond for weeks, months. Um, and I didn't know if she received it or not, so all that's true in the book. Well, the next part is interesting. You tell the next part. So um, Taj's mother was in real estate. She'd, she was a teacher, but then she decided to kind of move into real estate, and she actually yeah. sold a home to Daniel, who owned the, the restaurant. Who owned the restaurant. And, in, and Daniel was Indian, too. Correct. Yeah, yeah okay. it's Priya's brother. Yeah. And they have what they call a milk boiling ceremony. It's kind of a, you know, a Hindu ceremony yeah. to bless the house. Yeah. And it's very important. Uh, I understand or I've read that you know, most important next to weddings. And so they invited family from all over, which meant Priya and, and her family would be coming. Yeah. When Taj found out, he got himself invited yeah, to the milk absolutely. boiling and yeah. you know, the rest is yeah, history. Or, yeah, and, and then they saw each other yeah. that's great. and started doing little snippets from air supply. Yeah, lyrics. that part lyrics. I have to admit, I kind of made you air made supply up. up. Yeah. Well, but, it, um, it was a great meeting, and, right? But, yeah. but her it father, was it was, her father did not want her to marry someone in a love relationship, what do you call it? A love marriage. A love marriage, oh, okay, yeah. I, well, it's close. Yeah. Uh, they have arranged marriages. That's great. Now, I'm not certain what my father-in-law's, if he was really against love marriage, but maybe it was just against me. I'm not so certain. <laughs> <laughs> well, not now, he likes you now. I hope so, yeah. I'm not certain. <laughs> you know, this, this book, okay, let's finish the story, then I wanna go into your study guide, which sure. I find very interesting. Great. Uh, Okay, so you did go do study abroad. And let me interject Okay, there. go ahead. He actually, uh, his time in London, he was there as a missionary. Um, and I wrote it as a study abroad because I really needed, oh. in that part of the story, he needed to interact with just one person. And it just seemed to make sense that if he's there as a study abroad and, and I have one character that I can go back and forth with, it was easier to do from a story point of view. So, but a lot of the same things that we write about did indeed happen. So it's in London where he smells the, the curry, he yeah, sees the dress, yeah, and, yeah. and he, he drew his map in London of, yeah. of where he'd remembered coming from as a child. Yeah, yeah. So really a lot of those things do happen in London. In real life he was there, like I say, as a missionary. In the book he's a study abroad, but uh, otherwise. A, it, a lot of the memories of, of your life before kidnapping and after kidnapping your early life came back to you at, at that time when you were in London. That's correct. I, I spent a lot of time in East London, and yeah. East London has uh, a large major, a large group of Indians. Of Indians, yeah. And just interacting with them. It, it, before London, I hadn't, didn't have the opportunity to meet many Indians, and that was just a, a wonderful treat for me, the fact that I was able to taste the food yeah. and, and smells and the colors. Yeah. It became, it was very vibrant. Yeah. And so that's where the- he was scared to death at first. I was, just yeah. because I didn't of have a chance to interact with, with, yeah. with Indians before. Yeah. Uh, but then I learned to love them uh, mm. and just realized, hey, this is me, this is who I am. And that's when the memories, as a childhood memory, started to spring out about your mother and where you were? About my mother, where I grew up, friends, uh, and, rivers, the things I kind of did as a child and playing. And a big motivation in your life then, after that, was to reunite with your birth mother, with your mother. I think it smacked me in the face and said, you know what, boy, I have another life. 
I need to rediscover that. Yeah. And yes, it became a drive inside me to go back to India and find that family, find where I came from, find a belonging, uh, find out who I really was. Which wasn't easy to do. No, it was not. I mean, it was no. agree. It took no. how many years? How, how long did it take? Yeah, yeah, actually, it. I was married in 96. I went back for the first time in 97. Yeah. And in a very short period of time, with this map in my hand, I found my family real quickly. Did you? With some amazing yeah. coincidences. Amazing. amazing. There, amazing there are so many amazing coincidences. Yeah. Do you feel bad about that, or it was astounding when he's, you know, he's relating the story, and we kept saying, "Wait, could you go back, say that part again?" You know, <laughs> it's unbelievable, really, the coincidence that led him to his family. And majority well, of the things you read in the book are actually true, uh, in terms of how I found my family. All that, all that process was true. There's your whole family going to be on the screen here. There they yeah. are. Yeah, there it is. There's my mother and my father uh, standing to my right. Um, and he passed away a few years ago. Your father did, yeah. Yes, he did. Yeah. And then, of course, my brother and my sister, uh, right next to my uh, wife, who's in the red. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty woman. Okay, uh, so you you th things changed a lot in India since you were seven years old when you went back. Uh, it was really hard to find to, to hook up with your mother. It really was, and I'm, I don't want to destroy the story for those readers. No, don't but destroy But it's, uh, it's a, a wonderful process and a puzzle that I put together. Um, and it'll be a, a really interesting read. <laughs> You're helping sell the book, too. Yeah, I'm not trying to sell the book. I don't want to give the... I'm kidding. Uh, no, I, I'm yeah. kidding. It's, yeah. it, no, it's... A, it's a, it, okay. I think I shouldn't have read the whole thing. <laughs> uh, okay, then you got married... Big uh, Indian marriage, lots of food. That's correct. Yeah. Lots of people. Uh, lots of people. All my good friends in uh, in Utah came to support, and they were amazed with all the wonderful, tasty Indian food. You so. still like Indian food? I love. Well, of course. I've got Danu. Yeah, sure. Have you learned yeah. how how long? How much research? How long did it take you to do this book? Oh, I mean, I, I read books on India, both novels and, and guidebooks. I watched movies, uh, both, you know, documentaries and dramas. It really, anything that I could get my hands on that had to do with India, I tried to watch or read to, until I felt like I was competent to... And, and you spent time in India. I did, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. The story was well underway, but, but yeah. Yeah. And if you had questions about uh, Shiva or any of the other gods you could ask... Uh, Taj. Well, Taj doesn't know much about it, actually, no, because now. he was raised not here. Now. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. So Priya, his wife, was well-versed in, in a lot of that. And then yeah. I, would, I would find friends or people who would know somebody I could ask. And I tried to bounce questions off of several people to make sure I, I was getting well, the Well, I right was amazed uh, reading the book uh, how the author of this book knows so much about, <laughs> about India. All my, right, my we've wife got, is amazed, too. We've so. only got <laughs> three or four minutes left. Uh, Taj, what are you doing now? Uh, I spend a lot of time in India as well as here. I've, uh, my business takes me out there. We spend a lot of time in software development. Software uh, development. That's correct. Okay. Yeah, we have some offices in India. I uh, spend a lot of time with our nonprofit organization in India, yeah. uh, going back and trying to give back to the community, yeah. uh, helping the villages that yeah. uh, both my mother and my father come from. Yeah. Uh, I spend a lot of time in education. Uh, my children love going back to India. They get a chance to uh, meet a lot of their cousins and relatives that, you know, which is very extensive out there. <laughs> and they have a big <laughs> celebration every time you no, come Pretty home. much it is, yeah. it is, yeah. it's fantastic. And, and your, do, your business is doing well. Uh, God uh, has blessed me, yes. Yeah, sure, and, yeah. and you're, you build a place for your mother. Uh, yes, we've, uh, we've been blessed to provide some housing for my siblings and my mother. That's yes. terrific, absolutely yeah. terrific. Uh, uh, Cameron, this, the, the study guide at the end of the book, sure. Uh, and I hope if people will get the book, they can do the study guide. Uh, the book's dedication reads to the lost child in all of us searching for home. And then you go on to say, can you relate to the plight of little Chella Muthu? Chella Muthu. I, I had it right almost. Yeah, nice Chella Muthu, that's his name before he became Taj. Yeah. The Chella Muthu. Maybe you could say that's your real name. Uh, in other ways, why are we an orphan? I'm wondering how you came up with the title. Well, um, yeah, the title, it, it, um, 
in Taj's life, there have been a lot of people who have really kind of helped him along the yeah, way. Yeah. Who was the orphan keeper? It yeah. could have been the orphanage owner. It go. could have been his mother here yeah. in, in, in yeah. the United States. Yeah. Uh, there's so many people who really were the orphan keeper. It just seemed like, and then, you know, then there's sort of the, the broader metaphor is it God, you know, and, yeah. and yeah. so it seemed like the perfect name. And then there's this question, and we don't have enough time. I'm going to read it anyway. If a child is kidnapped from hell and carried to heaven, should we condemn the kidnapper? That'll give people who've read the book uh, and sit around for a study guide, That's book right. club, something to talk about. Absolutely. Yeah. How do you feel about that question? I mean... Yeah, that's did, a wonderful did, question. Did, I mean, did, my did, life is... You know, I, I'm a, my life has been wonderful, and I'm grateful that I was kidnapped. In reality, when I look back at the life I would have had, but again, going through the teenage years and the younger years, when you don't quite understand life, it's difficult to explain that. But now, in looking back on my life, it was a good experience. There was some talk about your father maybe having had something to do with the kidnapping. You know, the, that, the book alluded to that, but, in, you know, I'm a, I'm a parent. I have children, and yeah. the thought of... Uh, my parents doing something like that to me. I no, just don't no, believe no, that. No, There's evidence I, that pointed both ways, yeah, and so we left yeah, it open yeah, in the story. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, you have had a blessed life, haven't you? I surely have. Yeah. Yeah. Well, good luck to you in the future, and thanks for coming and telling your story. Well, I appreciate your time. Thank you very yeah, much, Yeah, it was really good. Cameron, good book. Ted, I What's your next one? Uh, you know, still, uh, still looking. Still working on a new yep. book. Your last one, The Rent Collector. The Rent Collector. Did really well. It's doing very it's well. It's doing well. Yep. Good. Well, you're both getting rich. It's terrific. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Thank, thank you. you so thank much. Thank you. Appreciate that. And thank you for joining us. I hope you'll join me next time for another Utah Conversation. Mm -hmm.